Shaliach, prophets, apostles. They got the apocalypse right. The last days are past days. Hello, everyone. My name is Al Person. You can contact me at pastor at mascot.church or in the comments below if you like. Typically, we always say this. If you like this video and you share, subscribe, or whatever, YouTube may recommend it on to somebody else. You never really know what happens, though, do you, in big tech? Speaking about big tech, my, oh, my. This is the... Um, the day after the uh, one of the biggest IT crashes in the history of the world. And um, if you're an apocalyptic end time uh, end timer and so on, and, and like and you, you could be scared. Uh, I went to get some fuel and I went from one service station to the next one, closed, closed. I thought, oh no, I finally got one that was open and someone told me I wasn't paying attention to the news. I just come from an appointment. Really fascinating times, yes. Hey, I wanna know how many modern prophets predicted that along with the, uh, the events with the previous um, in, in, in the assassination attempt that happened uh, overseas. I want to know how many modern prophets uh, predicted it. Uh, yeah, yeah, come on now, come on. And uh, you'll usually find they'll, someone will have this, oh, I predicted. But, mm. well, we're looking at the topic of shaliach again today. The, shal the word shaliach is a Hebrew word. And the reason that I like using it is because the role of the shaliach uh, encompasses the Old Testament prophet as well as the New Testament prophets and apostles. And this is an, uh, it's like, okay, now I kind of get this as a, as kind of a catch-all. It, you can actually see there are places where you can get a definition of the, um, or you can say, is the apostle and the shil and the shaliach the same thing? Some will say, yes, the, the uh, Greek word apostle from where we get apostolos is, uh, Greek word apostolos from where we get apostle, actually is the Greek uh, equivalent of the Hebrew shaliach. I'm not sure about that, but there's a number of strong definitions that, that say that. So what is the shaliach anyways? The shaliach is an emissary. He's one who speaks as the man himself. He, when he speaks in that role, he does not speak of his own. Uh, he does not represent himself. He fully represents the other. Uh, a shaliach, in some respects, a, a good way, place to see it is a good quality translator. We had a uh, uh, an overseas um, a guest in our church several years ago, and he didn't speak English very well, and he came with his daughter, but, and his daughter was going to interpret, but she, she couldn't interpret, because every time uh, he would say, and this, is, and this is what I think you should do, she would say, uh, my father says this is what you should do. Right? So she wasn't speaking his words, she was speaking, you know, uh, wedging herself, and she wouldn't change. It was a, it was a tedious service. It's helped me with interpreters, uh, especially casual ones. You only say what they say, if you don't understand it, you go back and get clarification, then you speak it out, right? Um, but the other place you see a shaliach is um, uh, a power of attorney is in some respects a shaliach, mm, you know, uh, but maybe an attorney speaking on behalf of a client, you can, kind of, you can kind of see that too. However, it is a strong biblical picture. Last week, we saw that uh, Moses was God's shaliach and that because he really did not want to speak publicly, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Um, congested in its last few days, uh, Aaron was nominated as his shaliach. And the Lord said, I'll put my words in your mouth, Moses, and your words in his mouth, and I'll be with your mouth. We saw that last week. Now, there, um, there's another uh, shaliach statement that we find in um, regards to, to King David. And I think King David is the only king outside of the Lord Jesus Christ who operates in that mode. But let me read to you what King David said as he was getting ready to, um, uh, to die, to pass on. And this is from um, 2 Samuel chapter 23. Now, these are the last words of David. The oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the oracle of the man who was raised on high, anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. So we know who this guy is, right? The spirit of the Lord speaks by me. His word is on my tongue. Okay. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, when one rules justly over men, ruling in the fear of God. So look at this. Uh, uh, 2 Samuel 23, 2. David is stating that he is operating in the role or can or has operated in the role of shaliach. The spirit of the Lord speaks by me. His word is on my tongue. And this is very, very, very important. It's, it's more than a casual thing to understand. The shaliach operates as God's representative. Now, if your organization today or your church claims to be the apostle of today or have apostolic authority today or be the voice of God today, you need to test that. And I say, 
that does not exist. It doesn't. I'm going to just give you this. Let's let's just think for a moment about the uh, Roman Church or the Orthodox Church. If if the uh, uh, the Roman Pope today were the Shaliach who always spoke when in that capacity as he was speaking as God himself, there would be no variation from Pope to Pope in that role. Maybe their personal opinion might be different, but from Pope to Pope in that role and no variation with Scripture and no variation it at all. So the moment they change their doctrines, you say, well, all right, who is the true Shaliach? They say, well, we didn't understand back then. Well, back then, if you didn't understand, that one is not speaking as the Shaliach of God. Hmm, you can get that. It's the same amongst the Orthodox. And by the way, any religion, really, it would be, uh, uh, but amongst, let's say, the, the people of the book, if you will, if you want to use that phrase, would be the same with the Jews or, uh, or Muslims uh, as well. If they believe that they're speaking in, uh, as the voice of God today, there would never be a variation, ever. Their doctrines wouldn't change or whatever. It would be consistent. And so that's a good, interesting point. Now, amongst, of course, the Western church, which has become a bit of a circus free-for-all, there's a lot of people claiming to be apostles and prophets and so on. Listen, if you are the shaliach, you are never wrong, and you're never at odds with what an other shaliach would ever have said, or what the scriptures say, there would be no variation. You know, these, these uh, prophets who claim this or that, I'm going to say, have never been right. You know, they might get like a, a, a nuance of things that are right. They say, you know, really, truly, that's just such a generic statement. Kind of, you got lucky, pal, right? But all you need to do is be wrong once to demonstrate that you're not a shaliach. And uh, yeah, it's very, very humbling. It's very humbling. Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Just be careful about that. All right, so this is the claim that, that um, oh, and by the way, we're going to get to this apocalypse thing. I've got to hunt this down quickly in my time. Oh, this is the claim that David made. Let's have a look at how in the New Testament, the New Testament emissary, representative, apostle, whatever called the New Testament shaliach, introduced themselves. Just a couple of examples here. I'll tick through these pretty quickly. Uh, first, we have Paul. We have Paul, a few of these going on here. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, a shaliach, right? Set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through the apostles, the prophets in the Holy Scriptures, okay? So Paul is making the claim, I am speaking as the man himself. Now, maybe not when he, not certainly not when he's in his personal life or whatever, but he knows when he's speaking the words of God. Remember that last week we said that, uh, that Paul stated that Christ had come to Ephesus and preached to them? Well, how did that ever happen? Jesus never, never left um, the shores of Galilee. Was Paul wrong? No. The Lord's shaliach was in Ephesus. And in that way, in that respect, he, um, Christ had come to Ephesus to preach. Very, very interesting. Go back to last week's video. If um, I'll put these in a playlist, I think, when I get a chance. Okay, Paul again, 1 Corinthians. I'm gonna, uh, Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes. Sosthenes. Sosthenes, right. To the church of God that is in Corinth. Okay, Paul, called by the will of God to be a shaliach of Christ Jesus. You can already see a Trinitarian thing going on here, but that's very, very interesting. Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians, at uh, chapter uh, 1 here, uh, Paul, just the introduction, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, Paul, and a shaliach of Christ Jesus by the will of God. See, he is saying, I am ministering to you, speaking to you as shaliach, as the man himself. Okay, so I have authority here. And this is the thing that's very, very critical in the apostles' writing that is, we have to understand. This is why the apostles were empowered to do things that you and I are not. We are not shaliach. That we're not a, you're not a shaliach or shaluchim, that wonderful plural word I struggled with last week. Paul to the church of Galatia. Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Right? Paul, he opens up, Paul, a shaliach. Speaking as the man himself. All right, go on to Ephesians here. A Paul, a, sh a shaliach, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus. You see the, st the standard thing going on here. Now Paul, not writing to a church, but writing to Timothy, right? His friend. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God according to the promise of life. So, you know, if he was writing a casual letter to a friend, all right. But now he is writing or speaking as shaliach, right? Mm, very, very interesting. This, by the way, is one of the reasons why we see these um, epistles as so important. Is Paul alone? No, Paul is not alone. Peter, Peter as an apostle, this is 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter as an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are 
elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontius and Galatia and Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, etc. Okay, how does he open? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, right? He claims also to be a shaliach. Now, Peter has a bit of an advantage over Paul in terms of the rest of the Christian world of the day because he was part of the commissioning service face-to-face in uh, which we read about from John 14 on through 17, uh, maybe 13 on through 17, the upper room discord. He's actually um, commissioned by the Lord before he dies and rises from the dead. Paul is commissioned after the resurrection of Christ, but they all saw the Lord, which was the critical element of being a shaliach. You had to have seen the Lord. Okay, we're going to continue on here to 2 Peter uh, chapter 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. Now you notice here that there seems to be some distinction between servant and apostle. And that's another thing worth looking at just when you try to understand this shaliach role. And we'll see that in just a moment here in another reference. Now, staying with Peter for just a moment, uh, let's just note that Peter uh, uh, does a category thing that is in a, that um, is kind of what we're talking about. This is 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, just the opening words. This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you. Oh, base, basically, that is not correct. This is um, 2 Peter um, 3, this 2 Peter 3, 1 to 3. Okay, pardon me. Yes, it is. Uh, the opening words of that chapter. This is now the second letter that I am writing to you, beloved. In both of them, I'm stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder. Okay. That you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord our Savior through your apostles. Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days and so on. So, Peter is linking the holy prophets and the apostles together. The shaliach all together. These spoke as the man himself. Now, the real, uh, uh, the real key, not a key, but something that's useful here, is to understand and to know the attributes of God. God is all-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful, eternal. His shaliach are never going to disagree with each other. I wanted a plural word here. His shaluchim is, you know, I'm struggling with that. I've got, I, I'll do this. If I do a third video, I'll definitely get this pronunciation right. His, the multiple um, servants who are in the role of shaliach will always harmonize. And Peter and Paul both said that the end time position they were preaching was drawn from the Old Testament. The Lord himself used the Old Testament prophets as the basis for his teaching on end time events. Now, the Lord operated in and out of that role of shaliach as well, which we saw, and we should do a little bit of a deeper dig here. The entire prophetic panorama is consistent because the prophets, the apostles, were all in the role of shaliach. They did not disagree with each other at all. And that's interesting. Paul said he only preached what the prophets said. And Peter, very much the same. So this is also curious. The book of Revelation is pretty much an entire... Um, a comparison or look at the prophetic Old Testament pictures. And uh, and you can see that there's never been, there was never a disagreement uh, between the uh, God's shaliach. This is a really fascinating element. Have you really thought about this? It's really nice, kind of heavy duty. I'm enjoying this. Now, have a look in contrast at the way Jude introduces himself. How is my time? Okay. In contrast at the way Jude introduces um, or, or well, talks about the apostle, the shaliach. He says, but you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you in the last time, there will be scoffers. Okay. So what is Jude saying? He's not talking like Paul, where he says, we apostles, which you're going to see in a moment. Jude said, those apostles, they said this to you. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so as influential as Jude is and some of these other writers who are not apostles, they make the point clearly, those who are apostles, those who are not. You kind of have a small A apostle and a capital A apostle, as some have said going forward. That's not a bad distinction. Okay, so are there apostles today at all? Of course not. That someone claims to be an apostle today, I want to put, you have to put two of them in the room and say, give us your doctrines. There would never be a disagreement if they were apostles and there'd be no disagreement with scripture. And uh, you know where this would go. What a storm. <laughs> okay, now, uh, we said that the apostles were right about the apocalypse and, um, uh, and the apocalypse is in the past. There's a constant barrage of criticism towards Christianity and, and, other, uh, and, and even um, to some extent Islam and, and not so much Judaism. But 
uh, towards Christianity directly, saying that um, the apostles, the prophets, the main teachers of the Christian doctrine, got the apocalypse wrong because Jesus really fully anticipated it to be in his day, and he taught that it was going to be in his day, and all of his apostles, his writers, taught the apocalypse was near and it was going to be in his day, but obviously it didn't happen. Folks, this has to do with what the apocalypse really was. And I'll make the point again and again and again, the apocalypse was not the end of all natural creation. It was the end of the old covenant creation, the old time. It was the uh, the transitioning from the old into the new. The very word apocalypse does not mean destruction. It means revealing, the, the, um, the exposing of what was eclipsed, if you will, right? Apocalypse. And, uh, and so I contend fully that the Lord did not get the apocalypse wrong, that his shaliach did not get the apocalypse wrong. Let's make an interesting uh, observation here about something that is that Paul said about the apostles, the shaliach, altogether. I'm going to put this up on the screen here. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 8 to 10. A very, very interesting passage. Listen carefully. Already you have what you want. Already we, you have become rich. Without us, you think we become... This is Paul defending the, the uh, role of, of the apostles. And he's being a bit sarcastic. Uh, uh, and would that you did reign so that we might share the rule with you. Okay. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, like men sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. Okay, so listen to what Paul is saying here. Paul is saying that God has, um, uh, has let's just use these exact words here, exhibited the apostles as last of all. Hang on. Men sentenced to death. People have died since the apostles. People have been sentenced to death since then. What's he, ta- what's he saying? Have you lost your mind, Paul? What's going on? Aha. Uh-huh. At the death of the last apostle, or as the apostles died, the end was coming and drew near. The end began to be, if you will. The last days began to unfold. We've talked about this in the past. If you want, we'll talk about it again in the future. That's fascinating. In fact, when you look at the uh, the three uh, places, the three Olivet Discourse, the Olivet Discourse sermons, did I just stumble that language? Uh, there is Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. Some would question Luke 21. It reads a little bit differently, but um, I'm going to lump them all together. You'll notice that in Mark 13 and Matthew 24, there is a, a um, Jesus says this is going to happen to the apostles, and then he goes on and he talks about some things that would happen otherwise, and he uses this, this phrase. He says, let the reader understand. What do you mean? Is, am I the reader? Am I whatever? Well, the apostles would know what would happen to them. They would be martyred, they would be killed, they would be drawn, you know, into the synagogues, into the courts, fed to lions, whatever, pretty much all but one uh, that we're aware of died, and he wasn't there to see the events. But what they wrote about what was coming, Jesus says, let the reader understand. So the apostles, this is going to happen to you, let the reader understand what's coming. The readers were not apostles, but they were left to see the abomination of desolation and all of those interesting things. Isn't that really fascinating? Really, really fascinating. So this last thing. Now let's just come to the Luke um, sermon that I said may or may not be in all of it. Discourse sermon. I believe that it is. I think those who are trying to separate it off uh, are crossing a bridge too far. But I'm happy if you want to do that. And um, and let's just see what's going on here. I've got to do a small amount of reading. And uh, this is Luke chapter 21, starting at verse one. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor woman, sorry for my chuckling, something else just caught my attention here. And he said, truly I say to you, this poor woman has put in more than all of them for they're contributed out of their abundance, but she has a poverty, but she out of poverty put all she had to live on. And while some were speaking of the temple, so, so he's in the temple, this is why we read that little bit. This is a temple thing going on. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And he asked him, and they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, listen carefully, very, very carefully to this. Hold the shaliach thing up here. See that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. The time is at hand. Haven't you heard that time is at hand? Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. All right. Now, 
there is a really magical connection. I first heard this um, uh, 20 years ago. I was just in, in a comment made by Don K. Preston, actually, when he was in Australia. And it has res resonated in me for 20 years. So, and I thought, this is the just such a valuable, interesting, eschatological statement that he made here. Really, really fascinating. Let's just do this, okay? Um, he says, if somebody comes to you and says, the time is at hand, or whatever, so don't listen to them. All right, well, that, that's fine. Except that if you read letters, works written by these very men he's talking to, they use statements like that. The time is at hand, the judge is at the door, things are about to be, etc., etc., etc. His very apostles seem to be using the phrases that somehow they're being told to ignore. How do you get around that? How do you get around that? Let's just try this again. Let's just use the time is at hand statement. You can you know these statements. You, you, you've heard them. They're, they're out there. The Lord says to his shaliach, those who speak or will speak once the, you know, he's gone into eternity. Uh, if somebody says the time is at hand, ignore them. They don't know what they're saying. So that's pretty good advice today for us. All these end time prop prophetic prognosticators, don't listen to them. Don't give them your money. Don't, 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 don't. Right? The preacher says the time is at hand, etc., etc. Hand in this verse. Right? In fact, Jesus also says that someone who says that the Lord is delayed his coming is a wicked servant. That's fun. You look that up. You'll enjoy that one. Anyways, he says to these apostles, if someone says to you the time is at hand, don't listen. But then only a few years later, about 20, 30 years later, these very ones are writing the time is at hand. What's going on? Well, Jesus was talking about a series of events that we call the last days that only the apostles the shaliach knew the timing of. Remember he said to his shaliach, I will give you the spirit and he will show you things to come. Right? That's not to you, by the way. That was only to the shaliach. Fascinating. Really, really fascinating. Did they get the apocalypse wrong? Oh no, they got it completely right. The apocalypse that we saw with the fall of Jerusalem and the change of the covenants and so on and so forth and the change of the way the entire world is now able to relate to God they got it right. They got the timing right. They nailed it. Isn't that wonderful? There you go. This is the shaliach, prophets, apostles. They got the apocalypse right. I'll put that slide up now. The last days are past days. My name is Al Persson. Come again later on. Uh, next week, I think there's another video coming.